Now, when it comes to all-round saws, or in general, a Japanese pulling saw that you can use for the most different applications, there's for me personally nothing better than the Silky Big Boy. And the reason for that is pretty simple. I've used in the, in the past Gomboys from anything from 18, 24, 27 centimeters. Um, I had another Japanese brand equivalent which is called Tajima, which is also 24 centimeters long, 240 millimeters. And I've discovered that it is a practical length, but for the little bit of more weight that is pretty much neglectable, I can get in the big boy a 36 centimeter long blade in a lot of different variations. That is just giving me the edge very often when I'm on canoe trips, um, very especially on canoe trips. I have to say when I'm doing firewood um, and I, for example, have a group of people with me, a um, group of kids, or I'm by myself, there is just a part of the day when I don't touch an axe anymore. And if I have the choice, I always have an axe with me just because of capabilities, especially in emergencies. But in general, I always do my firewood with a saw. It is way more material saving because with an axe, you always have to um, cut a bigger cleft. Um, it is way more material saving. It's more efficient on your power. It's a lot safer. Um, and at the end of the day, you're doing so much firewood on these trips that it really makes a huge difference. So with the big, with the big boy, with the 360 millimeter long blade, I can do a lot of bigger stuff. Um, I mean, bigger, we're talking maybe 15, 20 centimeters diameter. But a, a bigger point is actually that all of this 10, 15 centimeter stuff that I'm doing also for spoon carving, it's just cut a lot easier because I'm having more blade length. Um, that means the amount of times I have to go back and forth is just less. And that sounds pretty, I mean, that sounds pretty um, um, arbitrary in a way, but it, it does make a difference. Now you can see I have two of these, a blue and a yellow one or orange, whatever you want to call it. Um, I bought this one this year in Japan just because the prices here are so good. Um, and I have this one, the XL, um, has only six and a half teeth per inch. Well, this one here is coming in at 13. You can tell that there's twice as many teeth, so it means that they have to be a lot smaller, which means this is a medium, um, medium tooth con configuration. And here we got an XL and then there's an L in between and there's also a small. So the small and medium, I would use definitely for anything for dry wood. Um, if you do any timber framing, for example, um, or you're doing firewood, for example, the medium is actually my favorite when it comes to dry coniferous firewood, which is usually what I find in the boreal forest when I'm uh, on canoe trips. Is what I'm usually finding is finding, or what I'm using is dry, of course. So the drier the wood, the, the nicer it actually very often is to have a little bit smaller teeth. Um, As I mentioned before. any slightly drier wood like the spalted beach I just use the the medium blade here medium not in length but in teeth of course 13 per inch and it's a perfect cut not a ripple just incredible. The XL is definitely what I'm using anything green wood when it, on that's what we're doing today. The XL is, is also a bent shape as you can see versus the straight blade on, on all the other ones. If I had the choice I would personally get one XL in the yellow probably and then I would just buy a medium spare blade and that's the next great thing about these as I said before they have a self tightening system so you only need one side and you can use a knife or anything basically to just use the spine or you just use um, a leatherman I've got in the other pocket or you just use a nickel any coin is gonna do that for you um, and you can change those blades within a couple seconds it's very very quickly done 
So I would very often carry a spare blade in the, in the plastic sheath it actually comes in. Which means when I'm out and about, I'm bringing something that weighs an extra 40 or 50 grams, maybe even less. And if I find the need to cut something different from what I'm expecting, I'm just changing the blades. Um, so again, large and X large I'm using for anything green. And the extra length, um, the two-handed, very, very roomy handle is rubberized. The heavier me mechanism um, on the lock as well as the other setting they, they all give you, which is this more straight second setting if you're working downwards and you can't get your hands that low, it's not as comfortable, uh, you just switch to this setting here that allows you to be at a different angle to the workpiece while still keeping the blade riding um, completely horizontally. While in this setting here, I personally have to get further down like that. So this is something that's also very useful. The medium and small teeth and the medium blade is, is the other one I would get, a medium and an axe large. The medium ones are definitely great when it comes to greenwood carving and doing stop, stop cuts. And since I have the luxury of having um, more, many of them anyways and buying them usually in Japan, I just decided to get a medium as well to do the stop cut. So I just want to give you an example here quickly. Trusty backpack always has these in it. So it's gonna, it's just gonna switch on the XL to this setting here. Gonna rest the foot and I'm looking to do a couple cooking spoons. So I'm gonna cut a generous 10, 11, 12 inches, something like that here. And this here allows me that I don't have to bring my, my arms as far down. Staggered stance as always and away we go. So the cutting performance here is of course not going to be the same as on the Temagari, but the Temagari is very much a specific tool. I don't put any pressure on the way forward, all of the pressure is going to be coming on the way back. And I'm also trying to change my angle a little bit as I'm going, so I'm not always cutting across the entire section. So this way I kind of... Ease myself around and try not to use any energy but just on the way back I apply a little bit of pressure. This blade already broke at the tip from lending it to someone on a canoe trip but this blade has been with me already for over a year so it's kind of time to change it but I decided to really leave it on until it's not really doing that well anymore. But when they're fresh, they cut definitely better. And since I use them so much, I usually change my blades once a year. Um, that's gonna cost me about, I don't know, 20 bucks, 25 bucks, something like that. It's absolutely worth it. And as you can see, the cut Pretty darn perfect. Gotta love Silky Big Boy. Great saw, very safe, very efficient. Can't go wrong. So now that I actually um, drew the spoon blank on here, in this case it's just a very, very big um, cooking spoon, it's the easiest for me to carve out, especially here, the different directions of the, um, of the wood grain if I'm just using a saw for a stop cut. This is usually the point where my silky, um, the medium blade, big boy, is coming in. I just find these um, smaller teeth here as good for dry wood on canoe trips um, as I find them a little bit more comfortable to use. 
on spoon blanks like that. It's just a little bit more control. Cuts beautiful, beautiful as you can see. Just a couple of pulls and I'm, I'm nearly down there. So of course I'm usually turning it towards me, keeping it nice and horizontal. And you can see how well it cuts. Just because of the smaller teeth, there's not as much, um, on the start, there's not as much um, getting hung up, but I can just put it on with a very light, um, very light um, pressure, pull it along. And very controlled, stop the cut exactly where it needs to be. Of course, if there's anything extra, like this this part on the front here, um, I can axe it away. But with axing, there's often just small um, mistakes happening where I'm cutting into into my own uh, design just because I'm axing very close. So I usually just take anything off. Very clean cut. Same on the back. I can also axe this off, but again, that's always potential for mistakes. So it's more precise um, and a lot more forgiving just to use a saw. So folks, thanks very much for once again tuning into the channel of Woodsman's Finest. Um, I want to say thank you to Silky as well. When someone does videos like this where people are talking about different um, tools as I do it a lot just because um, I love tools, I use them every day, you know the work that I'm doing. Maybe from Instagram, all the spoons that I'm doing, all the trips that I'm doing, the equipment, um, is very important for me. It, it fills a very important role in what I'm doing, um, safety-wise as well, um, purpose-wise, and of course my obs my passion, obsession in a way, nearly. Usually, when people talk about tools, you're really wondering what is their um, what is their background? Why can they talk about this? Um, what is their expertise? And what is their motivation to use a certain brand? Is it just a sponsoring? Is it just because someone sends you a, a, a watch, um, a knife, a flashlight, an axe, um, a saw? In my case, I really want to say that through all of the years buying and using these tools, I've just really figured out what I want to endorse and what I don't want to endorse. There's a lot of brands that I don't want to endorse because I feel like they jumped the shark which is my friend's term for just having given up on quality for expansion and for profit margin. Two things I understand, but when it comes to quality tools and quality manufacturing in general, um, I just always feel like quality, your reputation, um, and the, the satisfaction of your customers um, is most important besides sticking to a certain tradition and this is what brings me back to Silky. I've used Tajima and Silky for the last 10 years. A lot of my friends who are arborists, tree surgeons, carvers, um, bushcrafters, etc. have used Silky. I've never heard anybody complain about anything that they do. Their quality control is as close to perfection as I've ever seen it in any company. Um, and that's the interesting thing. A lot more people are getting onto silky saws, but you just don't hear as much about them 
as about other tools because the saw is not as a, a cool tool really it is but not as hyped um, as a knife for example or flashlight or something like that but you also don't hear much about them because there's just no reason to complain there is just no drama <laughs> so to say around them no scandals like with knife companies where people are just discussing about it just a plain fact that these silky saws are used in Japanese pruning of Japanese gardens, sakura trees, um, bonsai um, just in general keeping Japanese gardens as beautiful as they are and are used all over Japan this should give you an idea how high the quality is and me myself having been to a lot of different Japanese gardens in Kyoto, in Kumamoto, in, in Tokyo everywhere seeing how people are using these saws to skillfully prune trees so they're not dying but they're actually growing a certain way is absolutely fascinating so um, I hope I was able to give you a little bit of an insight with these two parts into different size saws um, a little bit about the history maybe a little bit of an understanding what a Japanese pull saw is and why these folding saws are so extremely practical and safe for us to use anywhere from carving all the way to bushcraft and expeditions in the wilderness um, and I hope that um, you enjoyed watching and if you have any questions or any um, suggestions please just let me know in the comment section as always um, I'm sounding like a broken record and everybody else YouTube is a little bit of a finicky thing right now if you're not putting um, if you're not liking this video or like putting the thumbs up if you're not subscribing to the channel or leaving a comment there's just no way any of this material is reaching anybody it's just plain and simple like that so if you don't mind and if you enjoyed watching my videos in general please just take a second to get a, give me a thumbs up um, subscribe to the channel and if you want to check any of the links below to my Instagram Facebook um, and of course to the Amazon links where you can buy these things so the channel gets supported then please do so thank you very much for the support always and I hope you're having a good one and I'm gonna see you next time cheers